Hey, hey trainers, what's up? Professor Howie here. I hope you're all having a great day. Today's video is a little bit different. So, if you don't know, today is going to be the first day of Season 1 of the Pokemon VGC. So I thought today would be a great day to start a new series where I cover the Pokemon VGC. Because if you didn't know, besides being a Pokemon TCG professor, I'm also a Pokemon VGC professor, as well as an organizer. So, I love everything competitive Pokemon, and I want my channel to reflect that. So we're going off with this video. Now, this video is going to be a long one, so I'm just going to jump right into it. But remember one thing. If you want to see more VGC content like this video, that lets me know that people want to see more. That's it. Okay, let's get into it. So first thing you need to do is buy a copy of Scarlet or Violet. No, that's not what you need to do. Okay, if you don't have a Switch, if you are a Pokemon TCG player. If you don't have a Switch and you're not really interested in playing Pokemon, but the VGC sounds slightly interesting to you, go download Pokemon Showdown. It's a free app slash browser-based Pokemon battle simulator. You can go ahead and use that to see if you even like playing competitive video game version Pokemon. There are unofficial tournaments with Pokemon Showdown you can partake in but I'm going to be focusing with this channel on the official stuff in Scarlet and Violet. But if you're not sure if you like it, that's a good place to check. It's also a great tool to build out different Pokemon teams with different stats before you build them in game. Because building them in game can be a bit of a painstaking process, which we'll get into in another video. But if you're not sure if you're gonna like it, check out Pokemon Showdown. Now, what is the Pokemon VGC? You say that a lot, Professor. What is the VGC? Well. The Pokemon VGC stands for Pokemon Video Game Champion. That is basically just the acronym we use to talk about competitive video game Pokemon. It's not that hard to understand. Uh, it's kind of like how we all call it Pokemon TCG, Pokemon VGC. Same thing, right? Cool. Now, how does it play? So, you build a team of six Pokemon. You and your opponent face off and you see each other's Pokemon. You do not see their moves, their stats, or their held items, just the Pokemon. You choose four Pokemon to take into battle with you, and it is a double battles format, meaning you send out two Pokemon at a time, and they send out two Pokemon at a time. Why is that a big deal? Well, let me tell you. Double battles are fascinating. So single battles are fun, but they're very gimmicky. You can basically set up a sweeper like Garchomp, um, power him up and do mad damage to every single one po of the Pokemon they bring out, never losing your Garchomp. Very easy to do. In double battles, it's a little bit harder because you have uh, other Pokemon that can help support your big hitting Pokemon. You have more use for actually using disabling moves. You have more use for using those useless moves that we see in the game, such as Helping Hand, which will actually boost your partner Pokemon's attack that turn. It's it's a very interesting how the moves play around each other and how the held items do too. Now, if you are coming from the TCG, because I do know a lot of you that watch me are playing the TCG, here's how I will describe it to you. Picture this. You're playing a match of the TCG, but it's a little bit different because you have six decks and your opponent has six decks and you know the archetype of all their decks and you know the archetype and you know what all your decks do but you don't know exactly what's in the deck so the pokemon are the decks right and then the moves are the cards that you're playing against them you all go in blind you don't know what cards are in their deck right and then as they reveal them to you, you begin to piece it together. And with experience, you'll be able to know, oh, these Pokemon like to take this item. I need to watch out for this. It's very experience based, so it can be frustrating to get into. But my job is to make this as accessible as possible so everyone can enjoy this game. Because I think this game is fascinating. It is so much fun, especially once everything starts clicking. It, 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 I understand that the learning process is daunting. There's a mile high wall you're probably looking up right now and you're saying, what does all of this mean? And my job is to throw down a rope, throw down a ladder and help you get over that wall. So let's go ahead and get into some terms you need to know. Now, if you are already into the VGC, 
and you're just watching this to critique it to see about information I'm giving to new players, great. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments. But this guide is meant for brand new people. They have no idea. They are so new, they don't know what questions to ask yet. That is my goal. I'm going to try to give you everything on a plate. I want to make a series where I go into deeper dives into everything I'm covering in this video. So we covered what the VGC is. We covered why it's cool. Now let's cover some fun phrases that I was afraid to ask what they meant. So people said these for so long when I was first learning that I was like scared to ask what it meant. So I'm going to start with the one I'm talking about. That's stab. You might hear this a lot. Oh, that has stab. What is stab? Well, it's an acronym. S-T-A-B. It stands for same type attack bonus. Professor, same type attack bonus. What does that mean? Can you talk in English? Yes, yes I can. If you have a Charizard, very basic, a Charizard, Firefly, right? And it knows Flamethrower, right? Charizard knows Flamethrower. It will receive a 50% damage boost because the move attack, attack, the attack type move, the moves type matches the Pokemon's type. Same with flying moves for Charizard, because fire flying, dual wing beat, I don't even know if Charizard learns dual wing beat, but let's say dual wing beat, only, <laughs> the only flying type move I know for Charizard is what? Hurricane and max airstream because of sword and shield. Um, a flying type move will also do 50% extra damage, but rock smash? It will just do its base damage because it is not a fighting type Pokemon. Now, here's a little test for you, all right? You got an Azumarill, okay? It knows three moves. It knows Play Rough, it knows Aqua Tail, and it knows Bounce. Now, which of these moves has Stab? If you said Play Rough and Aqua Tail, you would be correct. Why doesn't Bounce have Stab? Well, because it's a flying type move, and Azumarill is a fairy water type, meaning it has Stab on fairy moves, and it has Stab on water moves. Now, we are currently in Scarlet and Violet, correct? So we have this new phenomenon called Terrasalization. We are not covering that in this video. It changes a bit about Stab, not enough to make you worry right now. Don't worry about it, we'll be covering it in a future video. Now, another big hurdle that you need to get over as a new player coming into Pokemon are what Eevees are and what Ivies are. So I'm going to start with Ivies because Eevees build on top of Ivies in my mind. So Ivies stand for initial values or intrinsic values. Basically, they are the raw stats your Pokemon is born with. Now, a Pokemon can have anywhere from 0 to 31 IV score. Okay, you with me? And for the stats, I'm talking about HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. So, they can have anywhere from 0 to 31 in any of these stats, and it's random. There are ways you can breed out for certain IVs if you're going for them, but generally it's random. There are ways that we can get around the randomness, which I will be covering slightly in this video, but I'll go more into detail later. If a Pokemon starts with IVs, EVs, no, not that EV, not, not, not EV, EVs stand for effort values. Now these are values that your Pokemon gains from knocking out other Pokemon or from items such as protein, calcium, HP up, things like that. So a Pokemon can have 510 EVs in it, but a stat can only have 255 EVs. That's it. That's it. That, that's EV training. Congratulations, you're in the boat. We will cover more about EVs later. Just know certain Pokemon will give your Pokemon certain EVs, which will boost it's a, which will boost one of its stats, is what I'm trying to say. Now, if you're kind of worried because you played through Pokemon with your team and you're like, oh, I really want to use my team in online battles, but they're not going to be competitively viable, they make certain items for this. They're berries, and they will drop your Pokemon stats 10 EVs at a time, and when they are completely at zero, it will say this will have no effect, 
and you are good to go on EV training that Pokemon. So don't worry about that. Just play the game if you first got it, have fun, and then worry about this stuff when you're trying to get into some serious competitive grind set. Uh, next we have natures. So a nature for a Pokemon will boost one stat while lowering another. There's also a couple natures that don't do anything, they're just kind of there. But usually you're wanting to use the natures that will boost a stat and lower another. Be like if you're using an attacking Pokemon, you want to boost the attack. But if you're using a special attack Pokemon, you want to boost the special attack. And then the attack stat is useless at that point. Same for the attack Pokemon with the special attack stat. That's how we're thinking with natures. You used to be able to breed them. That's not really a thing anymore. But, like, you still... <sighs> okay, you can still breed natures, is what I'm trying to say. But it's a lot different. You can, it's harder to get the Pokemon with the nature you're looking for. So they introduced a lot of new ways to get into competitive Pokemon a lot easier. So if, if all this information I just hurled at you seems daunting and you're like, I don't know what this means. I have to breed. I have to, I have to build up these Eevees and Ivies. I'm going to give you a cheat code right here. If you're brand, brand new and you're adamant about making your own team, you want, you don't want to use anyone else's rental teams, which I will explain in a second. <laughs> You don't want to use anyone else's teams. You want to use your team. There is an easy way to do all this. So you can do the old fashioned way where you get a ditto and you breed out for all of your, your stats like that. Or you can do something called hyper training. Now, what is hyper training? You might have been finding some things in this game called bottle caps and gold bottle caps. These are great items. You take them to the guy next to Obama Snow in the, the ghost the ghost ice city, like Montelavelo or whatever it's called. I don't remember. The ghost ice city, okay? You take him there and you go, I would like to hyper train this Pokemon. And he will max out per bottle cap your your uh, uh your IVs. So you can have a perfect 31 um in all stats Pokemon and have a basically a competitive ready Pokemon. And then to EV train it. You can buy all the vitamins, pump it full of vitamins. Each vitamin gives 10 IVs. I'm so backwards. 10 EVs. Each vitamin gives 10 EVs. You feed it 20, uh, 25 or 26, and you're basically good to go after doing that twice. And then if you want to get your nature right, they have nature mints now that you can just feed your Pokemon and give it the nature that you want. And then... They have this thing called an ability capsule. Now, Pokemon have abilities, right? Let's take uh, Azumarill, for example. So Azumarill has two abilities. It has Thick Fat and it has Huge Power. Uh, thick Fat, I believe, um, who cares? Because Huge Power exists and Huge Power doubles your attack stat, okay? So if you get an Azumarill with Thick Fat and you're like, dang it, if only this was a Huge Power Azumarill, well, guess what? One ability capsule, you give it to the Azumarill, and <laughs> boom, you got a huge power Azumarill ready to go. And the fact that Pokemon has made it this easy to throw together a competitive team, as long as you have the in-game funds for it, is phenomenal. I believe this has lowered the barrier to entry significantly. Now, yes, it's very expensive in-game. Yeah, it takes a, like maybe 500,000 Poké Dollars for one Pokémon. But it's not meant... It, it, I view it as a crutch because if you're going to be learning this, eventually, and at least in my mind, you're probably going to learn how to breed. You're probably going to get your breeding, you know. You're, you'll, you'll learn things step by step, but you don't have to take this huge pill and swallow it and learn how to breed, how to breed stats, how to breed natures, how to EV train. You can skip all that and get right into the battling. And I think that's huge for the future of Pokemon. And then if you do happen to enjoy it quite a bit, you can go back and learn each step one at a time at your own pace. Another thing that we have in Pokemon battles is held items. So if you played through the game, you might know like aura and berries you give to a Pokemon. If it takes damage, it'll eat it and gain some health. It's kind of like that, but there's ones that have a lot of different powers and abilities. For example, we have an item called Covert Cloak right now that doesn't allow your Pokemon to flinch 
that's pretty big. We have another item called Clear Amulet that basically gives your Pokemon the clear body ability. Also, really big deal. Loaded Dice, for example, will cause your multi-hitting moves to hit more times. There's just a lot of different held items that your Pokemon can hold that will really change how the game is played. For example, a very popular item is Focus Sash. Focus Sash allows your Pokemon to take damage and if it would have originally knocked it out, it'll bring it down to 1 HP. This could be huge because this could get your Pokemon. What if it's a supporting Pokemon? It'll get your supporting move off, which could then take you to win the game. That's why held items are a big deal. And as you play and experiment with them, you will learn more about them. And I'll have a whole video talking about held items later. This is just a, a very basic video. Now, if, if you don't want to build your own team yet. You you want to you don't want to touch Pokemon Showdown. You don't want to build your own team, but you want to try it out. There are resources out there for you. A resource I use a lot is victoryroadvgc.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. Their uh, pro players upload rental teams, which are codes you can put into your game and then use their team of Pokemon. It will be fully IV'd out. It'll have its IVs correct, its EVs correct, its held item correct, its abilities correct. Sometimes they'll even be shiny. You don't have to worry about anything. You can literally find a team on the internet that you want to play. You can maybe look up a guide from Cybertron VGC. You can learn the strategy to play that team, and then you can try to implement it for yourself and learn that way. That's a very quick way to just jump into the Pokemon VGC. And it's actually what I recommend. And if it turns out that you like this rental team, you can then breed it yourself to then take place in tournaments with your team. Because I'm pretty sure you can't use rental teams in online tournaments or in in-person tournaments. I know for sure in person tournaments you have to raise the Pokemon, but I'm not sure fully about online tournaments, so I will get back to you on that. Okay, and the um the format for the Pokemon VGC has just been announced. It is going to be Scarlet and Violet, of course, Doubles Battle, of course, but we cannot use the Paradox Pokemon or Coridon and Maridon, which is kind of a bummer, if I'm going to be honest with you, because I think the Paradox Pokemon are some of the most interesting, coolest Pokemon that we've received to use, but they're also very strong. So I believe this is a good call from the Pokemon Company to make us use the other Pokemon first before giving us the big toys in the tool chest. The tool chest, the toy chest, you know what I mean? So like, we gotta use this stupid overpowered Flamingo before we get the cool uh, cat saber tooth with swords in its mouth, right? Makes sense to me. The VGC formats usually last from one to two months. I believe that this VGC is going from December 1st till January 4th, although I could be wrong. Please fact check me on that, and if I am, I will put it down below in the comments somewhere. <laughs> or someone will probably correct me, because this is the internet after all. Now let's, let's talk about Pokemon types, po different types of Pokemon. Now I'm not talking about steel type, dark type, fairy type, rock type, no. I'm talking about roles, the roles Pokemon play. So Pokemon all have different roles in the VGC. You have your support Pokemon, you have your, your wall Pokemon, you have your wall breaker Pokemon. But there's a lot of different ones. I'm gonna cover a couple here very quickly and I will go more, I'll, I'm probably gonna give each of these types their own video. So we have like attacking types, which are just strong attackers that do good damage. You have sweepers or setup sweepers that will come out. They'll use attack and speed boosting moves, and then they will sweep the enemy team. We have weather setters that will set different weather conditions that will buff your team in certain ways or debuff the enemy team. We have support Pokemon, which can put up screens, light screen and reflect, as well as do other shenanigans. And we have our um, speed controllers like Tailwind, uh, Pokemon that can change the movements, the, the speed stat of your team, basically. There's a lot. Um, people call them all different things. There's more than that, most likely. Uh, I just went over this really quickly so you understand that when you're building a team or when you're looking at a team, you need to have all these different pieces in place. But you need to keep in mind that you will never be able to have every single piece on your team. Maybe on your team, but you won't be able to bring them all with you into battle. So 
you need to keep that in mind and choose what you find most important. Anyways, this video is getting much longer than I anticipated for it to be. I probably left some things out. If there's anything that you think I should have left in the video, please leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to add it into the next episode. Also, if you would like to learn ahead and you prefer to learn by reading instead of video, um, you can go to Wolfie and Cybertron's website, vgcguide.com. I'll have a link in the description below, of course where they have written out a very good introduction and explanation of the Pokemon VGC. So if that is something that interests you, go check it out. It's a great resource. I used it quite a bit, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Well, trainers, thank you all for coming in today. I really do appreciate it. I hope that my ADHD didn't completely screw this video up, and I hope that somebody out there has learned at least the basics from this that that's my goal this is a video that i want to build on top of with other videos and i hope that um that it's useful i'm going to be putting out these videos every tuesday and thursday and once i get out all my explanations i will be doing gameplays of pokemon vgc and i will be showing how to breed how to ev train iv train i'll we're going to show it all. So make sure to stick around and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. I really do appreciate you all being here, and I hope you all have a great day. Have a good one. Bye.